NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things baseball across North Jersey. This is Season 5, Episode 6, as we are in the penultimate week of the 2018 high school baseball season. I am Corey Doviak, and at this point, it is where I usually come up with a new nickname and welcome in my trusty co-host, but the nickname part will stick, as Joey No Show Sutera is not here tonight. However, he is being replaced by a more than capable, let's call him protege, as we welcome in co-hosting duties, first time ever appearance on Talking Baseball. He is Woodridge senior baseball player and NorthJerseySports.com. Student contributor, he is Jack Bartek. What's going on, Jack? Uh, I'm honored. That was some intro you gave me there. Yeah, well, I wanted to rub it into uh, Joey No ah. Show Sutera a little bit because we should tell people. Now, Joe Sutera is the esteemed principal of Woodridge High School. He's also an he assistant is. coach on the Fighting Blue Devil baseball team. And make, that makes him both your coach and your administrator. Would you like to share any stories about the guy you call Mr. Sutera? Oh, man. I mean, how much time do you have? <laughs> we got all night, Jack. He, uh, he, he's definitely been not only an awesome principal, but an awesome coach, a great guy to work with. He is all, as a principal, he's always listening to us and, He's been very open to new ideas and listening to what the students have to say, and I think that the school is in really good hands with him. And as a coach, it's kind of like a completely different guy, but also a great coach. You know, he tells you how it is, gives you the tough love, but at the end of the day, you know, he has your back. Do you listen to Talking Baseball here on NorthJerseySports.com? I do, whenever I get the chance. You know what they say, first time, long time. <laughs> yes. So what do you make of the Mr. Joey No-Show Satera that appears on this show weekly? I mean, what side of it, what side of the guy is that? Oh, that's the baseball coach, 100%. <laughs> I love the nicknames, by the way. You got it. I, every time I see him in the hallway, I use the nickname. <laughs> you want to give him one of your own today? <laughs> oh, I, I, let me think. Let me think. I'll come up with something. All right, we are go we have a big show tonight here. We're excited to get Jack. But oh, we got to mention too here a little side note. If you do, if you are a listener, and why wouldn't you be of talking baseball here on NorthJerseySports dot com, and you see the tweet sent out and the player in YouTube, that guy who's running down the first baseline in celebration is the one and only <laughs> Jack Bartek. So not only are you the logo of talking baseball, but now you're a co-host. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely a great memory. I'll never forget when you shot that picture. What, what? Give us the situation. What was it? Well, that was my junior year last year, and we played Emerson on the opening day of the season. And obviously, whenever we play Emerson, it's a great, a great game. I mean, they're one of the better teams in Group One. I'd like to consider us one of the better teams in Group One. And you know, Coach Karsich had us really hyped up for that game. We came out. Emerson jumped on us. We were we were down in the seventh inning, and we ended up coming up with a walk off win. And that was me running down the first baseline toward one of my best friends, Mikey G, who hit the walk off. And I'll never forget that moment. So yeah, thank that you was, for catching. Yes, no, it was that was fun too. And I always go down there early in the season because you got terrified. I know you're going to play the game, so. Yeah, it was not. Uh, it, that's why I was there. But anyway, yeah, it was good. Uh, good stuff there, and you had a good, se good senior season here. I mean, I know it started slow for you. Oh wait, let me set up the show here first. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit to Jack Bartek because this is the first time ever that we are having a student co-host uh, step in on one of our shows, any show, not just this one here on NorthJerseySports.com. So we're going to get to know Jack a little bit, and then we are going to do another first in the history of NorthJerseySports.com. We're going to have two coaches on at the same time. Now, we have done that. That's old hat. But the two coaches that will appear on the show tonight, one 
is Riverdale baseball coach Brandon Flanagan, whose team beat Glen Rock yesterday. We're taping this on Wednesday night, so Tuesday in the North 1 Group 2 state semifinals. Riverdale, the number 7 seed, knocked off number 6 Glen Rock to get to the final. And his opponent there will be Pascac Hills head coach Kevin Kirkby. Now, Pascac Hills making some history this week, becoming the first Bergen County public school to win a Bergen County tournament championship since 2010, and just the third overall in the 2000s when the Cowboys beat Don Bosco Prep in the county final on Monday. But they are also in the North 1 Group 2 final. Pascac Hills will play Riverdale. So we are going to do a preview of that all-important matchup with both coaches at the same time coming up here shortly. That's going to be fun, Jack, correct? Yeah, you're going to have to do your best uh, Anderson Cooper moderator job. (laughs) I said we may be more referees than uh, interviewers tonight, but we'll do our best with that. I hope you got some good questions for the coaches too. So, let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about Woodridge. We we talk. Listen, a a show cannot go by on NorthJerseySports.com without talking about Woodridge because you know. Hey, listen, we do the pictures. We know the kids. We uh, have a good time. I, I have a good time every time down there. That's what, what keeps me going back. Uh, we've gotten Coach Sutera's perspective on what happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, but for you, from a player's perspective, you guys got the number one seed in North 1, Group 1, uh, and then you had a tough end to your season. And I know you had uh, made contact saying you're going to write a story about you know the farewell to high school sports because you've played – as far as I know, basketball and baseball for the last four years. And as you head off to Montclair State next year, things are going to change for you. So, you know, talk about the stretch run of your senior season. Obviously ended in disappointment, but I'm sure some great memories made along the way. Yeah, definitely, no doubt. And I'm very excited to write the story, and I thank you for the opportunity because I I have a lot of people to thank and a lot of things to say, and I'm I'm excited to be able to put them out there and express it somehow. Um, but the season, I mean, I I honestly can't complain. From the beginning of the year, I didn't even think that I was going to be able to play with my shoulder. I had a shoulder injury in the preseason, so. Just to be able to get back and be out there with my guys was awesome. And, I mean, it, it it was better than I expected it to be. It was better than any expected it to be. And coming into the season, we were very inexperienced. Nobody was expecting pretty much anything out of us. And that's coming from me, who is the most positive guy in the dugout. Right. All time. I mean, from the first game, we beat Wallington, I think, 24 to nothing. And from there, we just awesome for the first two to three weeks of the season and then we ended up making the county tournament we got the 10 seed which is i believe the highest under the coach carsage regime yep we we got a tough draw with Fairlawn, who was a very good team yeah. uh, i think that, in my opinion under seeded and you know we had to face ryan rue division one pitcher who kind of stymied us a little bit and I think from there, we do a little bit of a, uh, a spiral almost. You know, we I think that a, our game against Lyndhurst, we played Lyndhurst for the county tournament, and I think that that was the last complete game we played the whole year. Mm. When we ate nothing, and I think that that was the last complete game we played the whole year. And, you know, I, we still we still played pretty well down the stretch. I mean... We had a couple tough losses to Beckton, who had Mike Ball on the mound. He is very, he did a very good job this year and a very good job against us. And we ended up losing our share of the league, unfortunately, which is something we always strive for. And then when we got to the state playoffs, we played Saddlebrook and it, it was kind of like a trap game seeing them for the third time. You know, it's tough to beat a team three times. Yep. And they, they jumped on us. And, uh, I mean, it, it was just the story of baseball. You know, if you look at the box score, they had three errors. We had none. We had 13 hits. They had 12. We had four strikeouts, and they had 12. So, it, it, if you look at the box score, you would have thought that we won the game. But 
every time they needed a big hit, they got the big hit. That's just what the job done when we had to. And I give them all the credit in the world. They they did what they had to do. And, you know, they deserve that win. Yeah, that is the story of baseball. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, I've had the conversation many times uh, before the start of the state tournament. There's no such thing as an upset. I don't care if it's a 116. I don't, you know, you name it, it's not an upset. Because in baseball, teams are different when they have their, depending on who they have on the mound. And, you know, for a lot of these teams who are playing for league championships late in the season, playing for whatever, you know, county championships, trying to, you know, piece together innings, especially with the new pitch count rules that are in effect. You guys don't go as long as they used to. And not that that's a completely bad thing, but there are some circumstances where it does uh, take away from some of the things that can happen, you know, whatever. But if you are a good, if you're a team that makes the state tournament, you probably have an ace and you've probably been able to compile most of your wins with him on the mound. And if you have a chance as a lower seed to not worry about a league, not worry about a county, and just put your number one online sniping that one seed or two seed or three seed before the state tournament begins, you got a shot. And it, you're, you're not the only team to fall victim to upsets. Uh, to an upset this year, you won't be the last. It happens all over the place because that's just the kind of game baseball is, right? Yep, yep. I mean, all the case is one team having a great day or you having a bad day or a combination of both, and that's it. That's the great thing and the horrible thing about baseball. All right, let's get your perspective then on Pascal Kills, you know, a current player, a current public school player, uh, getting – you know, seeing Pascal Kills go on, beat St. Joseph. Well, here's I, I'm going to talk to Coach Kirkby about this when we have him on, too, because we're going to talk about this county tournament. But people see that they beat St. Joe's in the semifinals and beat Bosco in the final. Compl- uh, there, there's no harder path to go through. But if you go yeah. further back than that, they had a first-round bye. Their round of 16 game was against Ramapo and Casey Hunt, a Division One pitcher. Their quarterfinal game was against the guy that you just mentioned, Ryan Rue from Fairlawn, a Division One pitcher who I saw that game. It was a, a one nothing game down at Breslin Field. Uh, Ryan Ramsey outdueled Ryan Rue, but it was Ryan Rue impressed me tremendously in that game. And then Joe's and then Bosco in a two day stretch. It, 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 there is no tougher road to a county championship than that, and a public school to do it. What are your thoughts? I mean, it, it's it's unbelievable, honestly. As a kid from a public school, I I know how tough it is to play against a Catholic school or a private school, and for them to be able to do it not once but twice in two days is unbelievable. And you know, one thing that's also awesome for them is going for the triple crown this year, which is something that I don't even remember ever seeing with the league championship, the county championship. And the state championship. The last so team, if they could, the last public school team to do it. The last public school team to do it was Pascal Kills in 1987. So that's a great point by you. That's that's crazy. So I mean, it, it just goes to show you how deep they go with their staff. You know, they have four Division One arms. So anytime that you have that, you know, if you have two, you give yourself a good shot to win a couple county games definitely a league and go pretty far in the state and you know with four i can't even imagine yeah and, and that was the thing too the county tournament this year was supposed to be played on four consecutive weekends so you were only going to need your number one and your best reliever to get through but with the crazy weather that we had during the spring it didn't happen that yeah, way so- yeah and they had to play saturday it was going to be saturday sunday and then the weather again so it was saturday monday and, uh, yeah, Pascal Kills needed all, well, Pascal Kills needed all its arms. It used Ramsey in the semifinals. It used, uh, Chris Lum, Chris Curcio, and then Brandon Siegenthaler to, to close it out. Then they went with Jack Brodsky in the final, Siegenthaler to close it out. Then they have to turn around and play the state sectional quarterfinal the day after winning it. And all they were able to do there was throw Paul Sullivan out there, who's going to Iona, who's a Division One pitcher. He gave up one earned run. I mean, he gave up six overall, but one earned run. And, uh, you know, and now they got Ramsey staring down Riverdale on Friday. It's really unprecedented. It, it, it's unbelievable, honestly. Yep. 
Yeah, it definitely is. All right, so let's Jack Bartek joining us in the opening segment of Talking Baseball. It was great. We're gonna get in that. We're gonna move on to our guests. But before we do, Jack, you have chosen Montc- the Montclair State University as your next port of call. Why a Red Hawk? Uh, just talk about that college decision. I, I have fun with it. I have a daughter who just went through it last year. She chose the University of Vermont, and I'm, you know, locked into where kids are deciding to go to school nowadays. You picked Montclair State. How come? Well, I mean, obviously it was the biggest decision of my life up to this point. It was so tough looking at a bunch of different schools. I ended up narrowing it down to Montclair State and Seton Hall. And I actually had two accepted students days on back-to-back days in <laughs> April. And I went to Seton Hall on Saturday. And I was absolutely blown away. The tour was amazing. It, it was a place I totally see myself at. I, I was excited. I have a great basketball team. And I was looking forward to getting up there and being a part of that. And I said, you know what? Tomorrow at Montclair State, they're going to have to absolutely blow my doors off to, to change my mind. And the next day, I went to Montclair State. The tour was good. The campus was nice. And... I, I liked it, but I wasn't as blown away as I was by Seton Hall. And then they had a communication seminar afterwards, which is what I want to study. And I went there. The professors talked, and I was impressed by the program, but still not not blown away by it. And then at the end, they said, anybody wants to stick around for 15 minutes, we're going to do a tour of the building in 15 minutes. And me and three other families stayed. And the group ended up getting whittled down to me and another student. And we toured the entire facility, the radio station, the TV station. They had full sets. I got to read off the teleprompter. And that that was all I needed to see was the studios, the equipment they had. Getting to talk to the professors one-on-one and just seeing what they would be able to do for me, I really think that they are going to be able to provide me with the best opportunity. Plus, the fact that they're only 15 minutes away, it'll be an easy commute for me. I'm a family guy, so, you know, it, it's nice to be able to stay close. And I, I'm happy with my decision. It was tough, but I'm glad that I decided on Montclair State. And in closing, I would just like to say that five years from now, when you have your degree in hand, I hope you will have me on your show, whatever show that may be. <laughs> no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. All right, Jack. Well, let's take this opportunity to try something that we have never done before in the history of talking baseball or in the history of NorthJerseySports.com multimedia presentations. We are bringing on, at the same time, the two opposing head coaches in a state sectional final. They will play against each other on Friday. First, we have to welcome in the underdog. The head coach of the seventh-seeded Riverdale Golden Hawks, he is Brandon Flanagan. Coach, thanks for accepting our invitation. Uh, anytime. Anytime. I love being on. And in this corner, <laughs> weighing in at, well, I don't want to embarrass you, Kev. It's Kevin Kirkby, the head coach of the Bergen County champion and top seed in North Lawn Group 2. Thank you for joining us here on Talking Baseball. Hey, thanks for having me. I got nothing respect, nothing but respect for Brandon and the uh, Riverdale program over there. <laughs> now we set down parameters for this show. We are we are breaking, uh, you know, dogma all over the place. We're bringing on two opposing coaches, and I told you both before we went on the air. I do not want to hear. I got nothing but respect for the other program, or else we're cutting this thing short. Kirkby, you already broke the rules. But uh, let's start here before we get into the state tournament. That's coming up on Friday, and that's going to be fun to talk about with both of you guys. I'm going to make Brandon Flanagan a second co-host here, and the three of us are going to grill you about what went on this past weekend because uh, other than the fact that I almost succumbed to heat stroke on Saturday, it was an outstanding weekend to watch high school baseball in Bergen County because your Pascack Hills Indians, uh, <laughs> I said it, Pascack Hills Cowboys, but that's all right. Kirkby did it too in his post game. You know, he's a Pascack Valley grad. Your Pascack Hills Cowboys <laughs> won the Bergen County Championship. First time a public school has done it since 2010. How are you feeling here a couple of days later? Have you even had a chance to process it? 
Um, it's it's uh, you know it's pretty surreal. Uh, you know we we you know we we we've been on a pretty good roll recently. The kids have uh, kids have bought in and, and know what they want to do, and they've had their goal since day one. And you know I, I think I told you in the interview afterwards. You know I, I never thought we had a chance to win in the counties. I thought we'd be pretty good. Um, my goal was always to try and go after the states, but uh, the kids said from day one they wanted to win the counties, and and uh, you know they've worked their butts off and, and they earned it. But uh, you know it's been pretty crazy. It was pretty tough coming back the next day and trying to get them to focus. On uh, on the state sectional semis against uh, you know against Jefferson who you know had been on a pretty good run themselves. Um, in the first few innings were a little bit ugly, but uh, you know we kind of settled down a little bit in the fourth and were able to, uh, to to play pretty well, I guess, and hit the ball a little bit. But uh, you know it, it, it's a pretty unbelievable feeling to, to be able to do what we what, uh, what these kids just did. So, Brandon, were you hoping they might have lost a little bit of focus, especially after you wrapped up the win against Glen Rock? Um. Uh, hoping is probably the wrong word. Praying is probably uh, a better uh, <laughs> a better verb. Um, I had, uh, you know, we listen. We never look ahead ever, ever, ever. And uh, you know, but in the back of my mind, uh, I was thinking. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. The coaches were saying, "Hey, it's a tough spot to be playing for both, especially for you know a group two public and and uh, you know having to concentrate on both." And I know. You know, as deep a pitching staff as they have, that's a tough spot to come uh, to come back from. To have to go Thursday State, Saturday Monday counties, and then have to come back, and and you know, knowing that uh, you know you're kind of uh, exhausting some resources there uh, that maybe you know somebody could sneak up on them. Um, you know, when you're the lower seed, obviously, you know you're you're, you're hoping those things, but uh, you know, it is what it is, and and you know, there that that's just a credit to the to to the coaches and the kids over there at Hills because. Um, to be able to come back and, and even if you have a couple of crazy innings early, you know, to be able to refocus and then put 14 up and, uh, you know, and move on. That's, that's a great job on their part. Yeah, so let's bring Jack Bartek into the conversation, Jack. As a public school player, current public school player yourself, what do you want to ask Coach Kirkby? Well, the one thing that amazes me is how do you control the ego? You know, because I know one thing that kills a, a lot of teams is the public school level is, you know, you have two guys who could both be the star, they butt heads, and it causes issues, splinters all team. You got four guys who could be an ace on any team in the county. How do you, how do they sort it out between each other? Great question. Jeez, this, this guy's this guy's unbelievable. Right. Kevin, how long have I been interviewing you? I never, I've been interviewed for, for 15 years. I've never asked you a question like that. You, go ahead, answer it. Phenomenal. Corey, he just asked you. Yes, yes, I told um, you. Yeah, Corey, I think you should just become the photographer and let, let Jack take over. Yeah, I, but, listen, uh, I've been trying to hand over the reins to Richie Barton for 15 years. Jack Bartek's on the show for five minutes. I lost my job. How great is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but to, to answer your question, Jack, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm I'm very lucky that none of the kids, you know, that, that, that especially the four kids that you made reference to, you know, uh, Brian Ramsey, Jack Brodsky, Brandon Siegenthaler, and Paul Sullivan, they don't have egos. Um, you know, it, it's very rare, and, and, you know, people are going to be like, yeah, yeah, he's full of crap. Um, but I'm actually not. I, you know, I mean, the kids, they, they legitimately root for each other to succeed as much as they root for themselves. And I think it's, it's, it's a true testament, and I'm going to give Coach Gans a ton of credit uh, you know, he came in, and I've been joking around saying he's the best free agent signing the school's ever had, um, <laughs> and, and it's true. You know, he's he's helped to kind of, you know, be the you know be the, be the tough guy, be the bad guy, and, and keep kids in their in their uh, you know in their place if they ever step out of line type of thing. But you know, he's been preaching since day one, which you know I've been trying to do for the past few years. That it has to be team first, and you know I don't care if you got a kid who's hitting six fifty. You know, if the team's not successful, who cares? And uh, and the kids have all bought in. Um, you know, and we've had, we've had a couple a couple times here and there where it has been the case, but because, and, and you know, again, I'm very lucky that we have a lot of depth, especially you know in the in the, in the field positions that you know a kid can get benched, you know, for a game type of thing, and, and you know, so they understand that you know, listen, it's got to be about the team first and not me, and then boom, everybody else, you know, they they, they got to buy in right after, that or else they won't be on the field. But uh, with regards to the pitchers, I mean, they've all. You know, I think they've all almost started the same amount of games. I think Ramsey started eight, Brodsky and Sullivan have each started seven. Um, Siegenthaler started three, and then we kind of talked about, you know, we were looking at the way the schedule was falling, and we weren't having four games a week where we needed to have four legit starters. 
Um, so we kind of converted him part of the way through the season into being our closer. And, you know, I think at first he might have been a little disappointed, but he didn't ever, you know, voice that to the, to, to the team or to the coaches. And he's gone out and he's embraced the role and he's been an absolute bulldog for us at the back of the back end of the bullpen. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then you know, he gets and, the uh, save in the Bergen County semifinals, in the Bergen County finals, and gets the tournament MVP. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's the epitome of, you know, a kid who – is a coach's dream. I mean, you know, I'm, I, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a diehard Red Sox fan. And, you know, as much as you love the studs like Wookie Betts and them, you know, a guy like Brock Holt who goes out and will legitimately play seven positions. I mean, Brandon Seedendall has played every position this year for us except catcher. And he's played played them all multiple games. You know, if, if we bring our shortstop in the pitch, he goes to play short. If Sully pitches, he goes and plays first. If Ramsey pitches, he plays center. If Bronski pitches, he plays right. If one, it, It's unbelievable. If, you know, if Rodriguez pitches, he goes and plays third. He goes and plays wherever we need him to. And like, he's even joked saying, like, you know, he used to catch when he was a kid, so he wants to be that guy. He's played all nine positions, so he's actually begging me to let him catch an inning. But, um, you know, well, maybe, I mean, he, he's the maybe, epitome of, of, of one of those team first kids, which is awesome. Maybe if you get up big on Riverdale in the state sectional final, you can yeah, get Yeah, no, I'm play. actually, I'm just throwing this out there. I'm, I'm going to throw a wrinkle in and, and start him a catcher on uh, Friday. <laughs> try, <laughs> try and psych out. There goes the. Riverdale for a little bit. There goes the scouting report, Flanagan. Start all over. (laughs) Kev, you know what I wanted to ask you about this run? And Jack and I were talking it at the beginning of the show. You know, people, and rightfully so, you went through St. Joe's in the semifinals and you went through Bosco in the finals. So there's no tougher road than that. But if you back it up two rounds and really think about it, you guys are the number two seed and you were rewarded for that high seed by getting to play against Ramapo in the opening round and Casey Hunt. Then in yeah. the quarterfinals, much delayed, and you get Ryan Rue from Fairlawn, and then you go yeah. through the two parochials. So it, it wasn't just the weekend. This tournament run is as, as impressive as any. Can even take into account what the parochials have done over the years. This one was as tough as any that I've ever seen in my 20 years of covering the Burke County tournament. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I agree. When I, I got listen. Through, I got to be on my A game. I got Jack Bartek breathing down my neck. You do, Corey. Um, it's a good. It's a good comeback. It's a good you. comeback question. I give that. That's, that's, that's solid. Um, good, good comeback. I, I think one of the biggest games we had, and it was one of our losses, was when, when we played Burton Catholic. Um, you know, we, we we weren't originally supposed to play them. We had a we had a, uh, a last minute cancellation, and I wanted to you know get a game in that weekend and, uh, and Bob McVeigh said that he would play us and we, we played him and uh, you know Ramsey went through and we lost to him one nothing. and uh, you know at the time Bergen was ranked you know whatever they were at the time they were like number 6 or 7 in the state and they were number 1 in the county and I think it gave our kids like even though we lost it was kind of like listen you know we can compete with these you know with, with the parochials even though you know we lost we had a couple opportunities and the kid Danner threw a jam against us and uh, you know they hit the ball a little bit but um, you know we made some hard outs you know, we had first and second with nobody out in the first inning. We didn't score, but we at least knew we had some opportunities. So when we faced, uh, you know, the studs, you know, we saw Casey Hunt, we saw Ryan Rue, we saw Joe's, we saw Bosco. The kids had in the back of their mind, you know, and, and they, they're a lot more confident now than they were back then, you know, with the way they're hitting the ball and swinging the bat, saying, like, you know what, we can play with the pro field, and, you know, we don't have to sit here and show up and automatically be down 4 nothing because the team across, you know, across the, uh, the you know, but the, the diamond is uh, – you know, as a parochial school. So I think that was one of the best things that we could have done, even though it was a loss for us. Um, you know, kind of got got the attitude that we can play with them. And then, uh, you know, we, we saw Casey Hunt. And, you know, Casey obviously is a, is a heck of a player. You know, kids going to, you know, going down south to Old Miss to play. Um, right? Miss, is Old Miss or Mississippi uh, State? Mississippi State. Mississippi State. <laughs> Mississippi State, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, he throws the ball hard. He's got a good curve. He throws a knuckleball. And, you know, we were able to at least have good at bats, and we, you know, we kind of grinded them down, grinded them a little bit, and made, you know, wore them down a little bit, and we were able to knock them out of the game in the fifth inning. And I think after that, it was kind of like, shoot, you know, we just beat this kid, you know, even though we were supposed to as the two seed. Um, you know, then you know Ryan Rue is as underrated, a, I think, a pitcher as you'll find in the county. I mean, he's very, very good, very good. You know, he, yeah, he's good. I mean, he's very not good. he's not going to throw he's not going to throw ninety two. And while you with the radar gun, but he can't throw a ball straight, and he can throw a fastball, curve, slider, change at any time, and he knows yeah. how to pitch. And uh, you know, I mean, he's going to Hofstra, you know, getting a lot of money to go there for a reason. Um, but you know, when we were able to beat him, even though it was only one nothing, it was one of those like shoot, you know, okay, you know, we're advancing, and now we know we get a parochial school, and uh, 
you know, we, we were able to come out and put put a couple on the board in the first inning against Joe's, and we, we got one in the first inning against Bosco, and I think that definitely helped our confidence in both of the games. That you know, like, hey, we're ahead now; they got to come and, and and you know, come and catch us type of thing. Yeah, uh, Jack Bartek knows all about Ryan Rue. Uh, he beat the uh, he beat the Blue That's Devils right. yeah. in the in the county tournament, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, it, it's been good. Brad, do you want to mention anything else about the county tournament run? And then we'll go back to Jack, and I got one one more thing I want to say wrapping up the tournament. But, Brad, anything else? Um, honestly, I I, I think, uh, you know, what I saw when I was there Monday um, at the finals, I saw a different Hills team. I think Kev brings up a good point about the Burton Catholic game. Um it just gives you another level of confidence. You know, they were not intimidated by Don Bosco. Um, my guys were there on Saturday uh, when they were playing Joe's, and it was no intimidation. So I think that's a big thing. If you can, you know, listen, I know, you know, when we were in the county finals in 2013 against Joe's, it was, you know, it was, we had beaten Bergen, you know, we had beaten Ruther, you know, Rutherford in the semis, but, but beating Bergen, it just takes you to a, a new level. And, and it is. It's a confidence. You know, even in, even in a one nothing loss, you can gain some confidence against those types of teams. I, I thought I was impressed on on Monday. They did not back down. You know, Bosco. We played them in the in the round of sixteen. They're a good team, um, and and I saw a no back down. And to me, that's huge. You know, that's a mentality. So I give those guys a lot of credit. Yes, Jack. What do you got? You know, one more question I had is. Obviously, a crazy thing is that you guys are going for the triple crown here, you know, the league, the state, and the county. And as somebody who's played in big games before, somebody who's played in the counties, played for league championships, played in sectional finals, how how did you get these kids to come back every day with the same energy level? Because I know that, for me at least, we would play in big games like a game for the county champ, or a game for the league championship, or a county game, and that takes a lot out of you as a team. So, how do you come back mm-hmm. after all these games and just keep bringing it? You, you throw another Division um, One starter at the team you play the next day. <laughs> <laughs> that, that does help. Um, I, I think I think a lot of it is the fact that the kids know. Um, that, you know, and, and again, like I said before, I thought we'd be pretty good this year, so I tried to go out and schedule some real good independence. I mean, Demarest, I think, was, they were what, they were the nine seed in the county tournament. Rutherford's yep. got the two stud arms. Oh, yeah. You know, your schedule was absolutely, it was great. Absolutely. You did the right so thing. So I think that, that, you know, knowing that, you know, and even, you know, we, we played independence later in the year, you know, against Hackensack, who started off phenomenal and can hit the crap out of the ball. And, you know, we knew going into even a game like that that you know even though they were their record wasn't great they still were the type of team would go and mercy rule anybody. Um, well, on your schedule, Del think, Barton and, and it got rained out. Yeah, we scheduled Del Barton. Right, attention to exactly. play Pope John. So we were, we were trying to like get as many games where it was like listen you know even if you know we go and we get beat up a little bit you're at least going to see good pitching. It's going to be you know competition that's going to get us ready for the uh, for the tournament. So you know we were kind of trying to prepare for, you know, what I was hoping to prepare for a state run type of thing. And, you know, our, our league, there's no easy games in our league. Um, you know, I mean, Malwa, Riverdale, Westwood, and, and, and Ramsey. I mean, Ramsey hit a little bit of a, ba- you know, a tough streak with, a, you know, a lot of bad luck where they lost a bunch of games in the middle of the season. You know, but they're always a perennial county team. You know, Westwood, Riverdale, and Malwa, Malwa and us all qualified for, uh, for the county. So, you know, day in and day out, we're, we're, we have a pretty good schedule, which, you know, I think is one of those things where the kids know that if they don't show up, there's a chance of getting knocked off no matter what our record is. Um, you know, and we kind of, you know, we, we talk about, and I know this might sound a little bit, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it's something that we do talk about is, you know, if you go and you play a team that is a little bit, you know, record-wise not as good as us, and if you lose to them, you don't want to sit there and make their season. You don't want to go and, you know, be the team that they do the thing they talk about at the, at the, uh, at the dinner at the end of the year. You know, so there's a lot of pride that we try to play with. <laughs> I, I, you don't I, want to be a part of anybody yeah. else's dinner speech. I'm sure that is no, what yeah, Joe Gambardella right, brought to the dugout this year. Don't be a part of anybody's dinner speech. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Another good question, Jack. A great answer from you there, Kevin. The the only other observation I want to make about the Bergen County tournament this year, uh, Kevin, and you could you could speak to this firsthand. The St. Joseph Regional Catcher. Raul Ortega 
Now, you guys beat up his pitching staff pretty good. A lot of it was self-inflicted wounds because they ran a bunch of guys out there and none of them could consistently find the strike zone. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure you noticed that kid taking his crouch every pitch and verbally and loudly urging on his pitchers in a positive manner. He, they would fall yeah. behind an account 3-0, and the kid would get down in his crouch, and as the pitchers, even all the way while the pitcher's in his windup, he's like, hey, throw a strike here. Come on, me and you, hit the target. You know, work all yeah. the way back. I have never seen a more positive player. You know, a lot of guys have great attitudes, don't get me wrong, but for a kid to verbalize it in that situation where they're getting their doors blown off a little bit, have, have you ever seen anything like that? And I just don't want to let that go by without making mention of how impressed I was. Uh, with I, ha- that. I haven't, and yeah, and that's very re- that's very refreshing. Oh, yeah. um, you know, to see as a coach, you know, in the day and age where you know a lot of kids are kind of taking high school ball is not as serious because you know you don't get recruited as much at a high school as you do more in the club stuff. And you know, he was he was into it from pitch one to pitch one hundred eighty five <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, what? There were a lot of pitches. Was, put it that know, way. It, it's ninety four degrees. It, it's humid, and, and the kid you never would have known it. So. uh you know, if he ever listens to this, my hat goes off to him because he put in a hell of an effort. And he got beat up a little bit, the amount of balls that were in the dirt that he was yep. bouncing around trying to block. And, you know, but uh, like you said, he was he was positive from, from the first pitch to the last one. So that was that's a true testament to him, as obviously, as a person and as a player. And it's very refreshing as a coach to see that. Yep. Yeah, I was sitting with a bunch of coaches uh, uh, along the first base baseline there. And one of them mentioned it's if I was a college coach watching it, I'd, I'd call timeout and offer that kid a scholarship. So uh, I don't know where he's going or what he's doing, but I hope he winds up uh, somewhere where he wants to go because uh, that was an impressive display. All right. Now the county tournament talk is over. Gone is the 2018 edition of the Bergen County Baseball Tournament. On to the North 1 Group 2 State Sectional Championship, which will be played on Friday afternoon, on the mountaintop, with no parking, <laughs> behind Pascack Hills High School. Thank God parking's I have a media a pass better. that gets... Parking's a little better, lady. <laughs> Thank God I have a press Sorry. pass that gets me into that top lot. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Flanagan, what is the plan to take down the mighty Pascack Hills fighting Cowboys? Um, I don't know if there's a plan. All, all I'm going to say is whatever he says right now, I know he's going to probably try and do the opposite. Of it. <laughs> Mind games. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What, well, what do you got to do? What you got to know is, is that um, Ke- Kevin and I and, and Gams, we're, we're, you know, we text a lot. You know, we're, we're I would say, we're, you know, we're pretty good friends. And sure. uh, it, it's, it's been an interesting 24 hours since uh, you know since all this kind of happened, um, and you know there was an interesting scenario obviously with us, and um, we didn't know if we were going to get here. But uh, our plan is just to compete. I mean, uh, you know, they're obviously you know they're on a you know, good roll. Um, you know, we played uh, two two days in a row back in the end of April, and um, they couldn't have been two different games. Um, but I think, uh, you know, we're a different team. I mean, we were, listen, we were, uh, at the end of that week, we were seven and seven. Um, after the, t- the two losses to Hills, uh, that Friday we lost. We were seven and seven going into our game with Old Japan in the coaches versus cancer classic. And since then, you know, I think we've become a little different. I think we, we came together a little bit. Um, even though we have, uh, you know, you know, a couple of, a couple of seniors that have been with us for three years now. If David Estevez four years, um, David Estevez ten years, together. it feels like it just seems that we we actually it was funny. DJ Nymphius and I, uh, DJ texted uh, not texted, he emailed me today at school, and we were trying to count how many uh, section finals David's been in <laughs> in three sports. It's and, crazy. Um, I think it's seven in his four years. Four, four football, two baseball, and one basketball. Um, so, yeah, it's insane. How many have you been in, Bartek? <laughs> How many have I been in? Yes. Uh, I think two. And I don't think I got a single pitch or minute in either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, you beat me by two. 
in my playing days at Pal Park. Sorry, Brad. I, I, I would, I would, no, no, no. no yeah. the water cup. Go, go ahead, Jack. I was the first one bringing the water cups, though. Jack, you did notice, though. You you did notice that when we turned the conversation to the upcoming showdown between the top seeded Cowboys and the number seven but red hot Golden Hawks, you did notice that <laughs> Coach Flanagan did clam up a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that awkward silence, we will continue here, Brandon. <laughs> and you did mention that you did have a unique situation. We don't have to get into it, but the end product is that you have Aiden Tucker on full rest, ready to go. So. Uh, listen, with the way Jack, go- uh, I did it again. Brendan Golden threw the ball in the uh, semifinals yesterday, which was great. And now to have your number one on full rest, I mean, you can't really ask for more than that with a shot, you know, to try to pull an upset. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm, I wish he was on a little less rest. Um, yeah, right. He's, he's on, uh, but he's been working out. I mean, to, to his credit, he's been, you know, he's been working his butt off. He's been practicing. Uh, you know, he's throwing a couple of real good bullpen sessions, and and listen, he's a competitor. Right? You know, I mean, uh, he competes. He's he's uh, you know, he plays all year. He's a baseball kid. He's going to Tufts next year. Um, and all he wanted was another shot. So uh, so hopefully we we earned him that shot. You know, whatever happens happens, and uh, you know we'll just uh, like I said, I, I you know my guys will go compete and. Um, you know, we'll just see what happens. But uh, we got nothing. Uh, I'm going to break the rule. I'm going to be. I'm going <laughs> to do it before Coach Kirsty. I Kirstie. knew it was coming. <laughs> we have nothing but respect for those guys. Uh, we've had uh, a lot of battles over the years. Like I said, Coach uh, Kirby and I talk a lot. Um, we talk a lot about you know a lot of things besides baseball. But um, uh, it'll be an honor to go up there on uh, on Friday and uh, and you know play those guys. So uh, we'll see. See what happens. It will be an honor to go up there and play those guys. What has this show devolved into? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, Corey, man. Come on. Corey, the more, the, more, the more I listen to this, Jack just has to become the, the, the head of the league guy. You <laughs> wouldn't let this stuff happen. If you no, you're absolutely right. Uh, Coach Kirkby, are you planning to shove it on Friday? <laughs> Uh, hey, listen, we always would like to shove it, but I know Riverdale is not a type of team where you can go and shove it. So, uh, they're, they're not an easy shovey. They're not. They're not at all. They're, they're a team who's been, you know, they're definitely a different team than when we played them the, the first two times. Um, and like Brandon said, you know, the first time we played them, it was, it was three, two, and eight innings. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we got a little bit of a, you know, I'll admit it, we got a little bit of a gift in the eighth inning with a, with a call that was made in our favor. Um, I think we, yeah, we got a gift. We got a gift earlier too. I think the you got a gift early. early. I think both, both we got a gift early. We got a gift. Oh, yeah. the love but, fest uh, continues. No, again, you're the was, best. No, you're was, the best. It, called? <laughs> it was a, it was a competitive Listen, either game either way. Game coach where, and I, he, he, yeah, he, I'm just gonna say, Kevin. Either way, we'll, we'll you know whatever happens Friday, we'll, we, we we probably will be you know heading out for uh, you know some kind of uh, meet up exactly. during the weekend. It, it's yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. It's, listen, we've you know lives, I've, I've known Brandon since, since we started coaching together. We you know yeah against each other, I should say. You know, we we still we we talk on a regular basis about things. You know, and uh, and you know, and, and I don't want to sound cliche. I have a, a ton of respect for him as a coach. The program he runs is always very successful. And you know, we were lucky to beat him twice this year. But as I said, and it's not, I'm not I'm it's not a cliche. And it's not a joke. It's very hard to beat a good team three times in the same year. And uh, it's going to be interesting because I, I, you know, you can say whatever you know, whatever you want. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, you know, I don't think there's any surprise. We got Ryan Ramsey ready to go. He's got Tucker ready to go. You know, these are two guys who squared off the first time we played, and uh, you know, it was game went to extra innings. So, you know, I'm, yep. I'm expecting a battle, and I, I'm sure that they're, they're that they're expecting the same. And I think that you know, it'll be good because whoever comes out of this is going to represent Bergen County, you know, baseball, you know, for a public school going forward. And, uh, you know, hopefully whoever it is, you know, can go on and go on a little bit of a march for the rest of the state, too. So, yeah. 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 No, it, 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 it's it, the level of play in Bergen County baseball this year with the public schools. And, you know, this is an issue. Uh, obviously, we're not getting anything at it, either one of you, in, as far as smack <laughs> talk goes. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Both teams love each other. We're rooting for a tie. <laughs> 
may it may the game be played late into the evening and may both teams advance. We'll leave it at that. Uh, but it, you know, it, just wait. It, we're going to have we're going to have the handshake line before the games where everybody gives each other a hug. Come on now, absolutely. Instead of and the national take anthem, the back to Riverdale with us. Exactly, it'll be all be a love fest. It's, instead of the national anthem, Jack Bartek is going to come out and perform Kumbaya, with, <laughs> accompanied well, by the Woodridge Marching that, Band. I can get that played. If, if that'll make you happy, Corey. I can get that played instead of the anthem. <laughs> but you know what, Kev, you brought up an interesting point, and I'll go off on a tangent here a little bit. You know, you said it earlier that, uh, you know, the... the the way things are going now is that kids aren't getting recruited out of high school baseball anymore. It kind of goes for all sports except for football because, you know, it's just that, that's where games are played. But yeah. uh, in basketball and in baseball, it's a lot on the, you know, the summer circuit and showcases and all those type of things, which I feel like is leading the movement back towards where, and yeah, listen, I'm, it, this could be a one-off, maybe I'm wrong. But I think that your program is leading the way back to when you get a collection of talent of kids like this. Hey, let's go play high school ball. You know what? If college coaches aren't going to show up, then what benefit are you gaining by leaving a hometown school district, especially mm-hmm. you know one like Riverdale, one like Pasquet Kills, Old Japan Demers that have these great academic reputations? What are you getting by moving out? You're not getting more exposure because the college coaches and scouts aren't there anyway. Do you feel like mm. that maybe we're starting to see a trend back in the proper direction of kids staying at their hometown schools? And Because in high school, it's actually where the wins and losses count. In club, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I, th- I think it's a shame, too, that, that, that they're not seen as much in high school. But I think that's when you truly see what kind of a kid – you got, you know. That's you where you see Raul Ortega. Seven innings. Is the kid going to go hit a ground at a short and bust his butt down the line and try and beat it out? You know, because you know he he knows that you know he wants to do it, so he doesn't let a teammate down, type of thing. Because he's got his 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 buddies that he's been friends with for fifteen years, type of thing. Um, yep. You know, I, I think that that's where you truly see what kind of a teammate you could have, which I think is a huge part of. You know what some schools might look for at college. You know you don't want that kid that's talented as anything who's going to come in and be the you know the, the problem in the clubhouse. You know you want the kid who's going to you know you don't see in club ball where you know a kid sprinting to, to fill up a you know either freshman or sophomore is called up for the state run who's going to sprint to the water cooler and fill up twelve freaking glasses to give to the kids when they come off the field. Right. You know you don't you don't see that. You know and that's what you know I think is a shame and not you know I, I think that a lot of high school baseball is where you truly see what kind of a kid they are. Not necessarily the talent they might have, but you see what kind of a kid they are. You know, are they going to hit a pop-up and sprint their butt down and be standing on second in case the ball drops? Yeah. Um, you know, there, I remember I remember seeing on Twitter, it was about a month ago, there was a, a video of a kid from somewhere down, it might have been Tom's River or something like that, where he hit a pop-up behind the mound, and the ball dropped, and he winds up standing on second base. And I believe he came in to score an important run later on in that inning, where if he's only standing on first, you know, you don't know if the next ball is a ground ball and you get double play type of thing. But uh, that, 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 that's one type of thing that, you know, that we've been trying to, you know, talk about, you know, in, in our program for years about the fact of always doing things the right way and, and playing hard and type of thing. And I think that that happens in high school all the time. And I don't know if yeah. it happens as much in club because, you know, you, you're just with the kids for a couple months, type of thing. But again, that, that's my yeah. opinion. I could be totally off. But Brent, your, no. your thoughts. Yeah, no, Kevin's one hundred percent right, and and I, I, even on the flip side of that, um, take away you know that aspect of it, just playing with your buddies, which I think is is becoming more important, which is great, is the fact that you know some of these club teams that are going to these tournaments when they have twelve, thirteen kids on the team, and they're playing six games in three days, and everybody's got to be able to pitch. Right. Mm-hmm. So every, everybody doesn't only have to be able to pitch; they have to be able to play another position or two or three. So you take these teams to these tournaments, and you have guys that got to play. You know, when we, Kevin just mentioned uh, Siegenthaler, where he can play every position. You know, um, yep. I mean, look at look at Gerard from Bergen Catholic this year. I mean, the, the kid is one of the best outfielders in the state. Last year, he was mm-hmm. considered one of the best pitchers in the state. 
so and you know it's something I tell my son it's something I tell the kids in my camp it's something I tell you know all the, the kids coming into freshman year is you got to know how to play multiple positions you know and yep. it just makes yourself you make yourself more valuable so there's there's that aspect of it and then so you, and you take the college recruiting into it and, I mean I don't know how many conversations Kevin's had with college coaches in the last five years but I know 15 years ago um you know, take Brandon Cohen, who played for me in 2002. He was all state. Still hit the longest home state. run. Still hit the longest home run I've ever seen live. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, great player. Played you know four years at Seton Hall. He's a two-time captain. He's getting in the Riverdale Hall of Fame in October. And um, I remember being on the phone literally four or five days a week for three, four months, trying to you know with recruiters. Um, back in 2002, and nowadays you don't really talk to a lot of college coaches. Yeah, yep, that, that's true for you, you too, know? Kev. Uh, I, I agree with that 100. percent It's a lot of the, uh, you know, as as a you know as a club coach, you'll talk to them more, right? Um, exactly, you know, because they'll they'll see them at a, at a showcase and they'll come up and talk to you about them type of thing. Um, but you just you, you don't get it much in high school at all, and you know if you do, you get it when you're in the county tournaments type of thing. Um, right. Yep. But uh, you know, I mean, I, I listen. I, you know, I was lucky enough to go play at uh, St. Joe's Philly, and I got seen at the county tournament when I was a junior. Now this yeah. is going back when you know kids actually didn't commit when they were a freshman or a sophomore in high school. <laughs> True. You know, for, I, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, it was. You know, I got seen. I got seen in the county tournament because we were pretty good, and I had a good four game stretch. And uh, and you, know, you won the MVP. And you are the first oh, yeah. ever in history <laughs> to win an MVP and come back and win the Bergen County Tournament as a head coach. I mean, you are a history-making man. I, you know, he's I'm a math teacher, teacher too. Guy. And he's a math know, teacher? Math, he's not even a history science. teacher. <laughs> that is, so, uh, or a physical education teacher. He's not a history but, teacher uh, like me, you know. You know so. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, no, it, it's, it, it's, it's a shame because, you know, I, I think that Especially that some of the game, you know, some of the games that that that, have, that I've seen in the last decade at the Bergen County Tournament are unbelievable, you know. And if you, yes, you know, you, you, you know, I mean, I, I've never seen a high school crowd like what was at the game on on uh, Monday. Agreed. I mean, there must have been a thousand, fifteen hundred people there. It was awesome. You know, at an least, awesome yeah. experience for high school kids to play in front of. And you know, yep. it's a shame there weren't fifty colleges there. But at the same point, you know, if I'm a college coach, I'm going to go to a showcase where I can see. You know, hundreds of kids as opposed to just, you know, seeing, you know, 20. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah. There I, were, I, I see where. There were 20 to be I seen could, at that, uh, uh, on the weekend for sure. Yeah. I don't know. There was definitely some, there was definitely some talent out there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to yeah. about that. But, uh, I, I, you know, if I'm a college coach, you know, I agree with them. You know, I'm going to go talk, you know, go see, you know, places where I'm going to see a bunch of different kids pitching and, you know, and see what happens and, you know, you got, obviously, you know, college, you got to get arms. If you don't have arms, you can't be any good. Right. And then, you know, bats hopefully are, are tougher because in a showcase, or you know, you see a kid hit four times who might be a stud in a game, but, you know, they, they, you know take Malloy, for example. Obviously, you know, Malloy's a heck of a player. Everybody knows that. Yep. You know, but if we had chosen to walk him four times right. and somebody's there to watch him, how are you going <laughs> to see him swing? Would you really have right. walked him with the bases loaded in the seventh inning? <clears throat> 100%. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. <laughs> all right, we can do this all night. Uh, and wait, I take that back. We have done this all night. We have kept the coaches <laughs> on here uh, for an extended period. It really, a class move by both of you to accept our invitation and do this uh, a couple of days before you're going to face off in the North 1 Group 2 final. Uh, it was fun having Jack and getting his perspective on with you guys as well. So I will close this portion of the show by saying, Brandon Flanagan, thank you. Yay, anytime. Kevin Kirkby, thank you. No problem. I don't remember I told you I'd come on if we, if we won anything this year. Sorry, I guess I had to come on tonight. Yes, you did. You, <laughs> you owed me that, and the last thing that you owe me is to make sure that there is a parking spot near the tennis courts for local media. and. <laughs> The localist of media, not that national publication that used to be the, the publication formerly known as the Bergen Record. I'm talking about hyper-local high school sports coverage. One spot, please, somewhere around 3.48 p.m. Thank you.
Corey, this is what we're going to do for Riverdale's you. Parking lot. Hey, Corey, Riverdale's parking lot will be empty. You can just come on the bus. <laughs> all right, Kev, that's one option. Kev, what were you going to say there? Hold on, i got to weigh all my options. <laughs> if there isn't a spot, I will even open up the gate down the right field line so you can pull your car in and pull next to my Jeep, which is parked sideways on a hill every game. I am going to hold you to that. Kevin Kirkby and Brandon that's, Flanagan. That's superstition right there. <laughs> this was fun, boys. Good luck, and uh, I'll see you both on Friday. All right, Kevin Kirkby from Pascal Kills, Brandon Flanagan from Riverdale. Jack, what would you think of that, having those guys on here? Uh, that was awesome. You know, seeing the respect between those two teams, it, it really shows you what's good about high school sports. And, you know, both of them having great teams, no egos involved. I, I think that that's the good part of high school sports. So it was awesome to be a part of. And I'd like to thank those guys for coming on, answering my questions. And good luck to both of them. It should be an awesome game tomorrow. You know, it, it, it did it change your perspective a little bit? Because, you know, being a high school player and then you get to see, you know, high school players, you get four years in the program and then you're gone. These guys uh, go through multiple cycles. They play – you know, you might uh, play against uh, Wallington, you know, six times in your career, and then it's over. Those guys, Riverdale, Pascal, Kills, same league, two times a year, every year, and they're going to do it again next year after, you know, this current group of seniors are, are gone. Have you ever thought of it from that perspective of, you know, what coaches are talking about and thinking? You know, it's crazy because you never really think of it like that, but every game, I well, now it's easy to see in hindsight – Coach Karsich, 15 to 20 minute conversation with the other coach for every game. And now it makes sense. You know, I play these teams, like you said, maybe 10 times in my career at most. And I make friends, I make friendships that will stay with me beyond sports. I'll have friends the rest of my life from other towns just knowing them from sports. So I can only imagine what it's like seeing the same coach. 10 years in a row, twice a year, the relationship that it must build. you know, And I, I think that that's really cool. You know what's great, too? My favorite part of being an observer of all this, like these guys are in the trenches, and I see them, you know, uh, like Pascal Kills is having a special year, so I'll probably see him five or six times during the season. Riverdale I've seen twice. I'll see him again on Friday. That's three times, and I've, you know, so three times over – I, I and they play 30 games a year. So I'm at what? I can't do that math. I'm a words guy. But not that often, uh, comparatively. But you, you do uh, our relationships build up by those times where you know when Brandon Flanagan brings up Brandon Cohen, who played in two thousand and two. Like that kid was a monster. He wore no batting gloves. He hit the ball five hundred feet. <laughs> you know, and that was in two thousand two. And he says the name, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. And uh, you know, I remember that home run. So. Uh, that's, that's awesome. the great thing about covering high school sports, especially when you get a longer perspective on it. Of oh yeah, that kid, you know. So, and ten yeah, years from now, yeah. we'll be talking about member Jack Bartek. So, uh, ah, you know, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yep. All right, that was good stuff. I am going to. We'll wrap up this show here. Uh, a great time. We are looking forward to your piece on a farewell to high school sports, which will be coming up in North Jer- on NorthJerseySports.com in the near future. I am sure. It was a pleasure to get you involved in the show. I know I've been promising it for a long time. Joey No Show bailed out tonight. It was the perfect opportunity, and i got to be honest with you. I don't know if he's getting his job back. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure was all mine, honestly. It was it was great to be on, and you know, having those guys on, it, it was just a really fun experience. All right, the last thing we're going to do on this show is well, first of all, I will say this, Jack Bartek, thank you, and we will see you next week on Talking Baseball. We will close this show, and Jack, you won't hear it because I don't want you to. I'm going to plug it in right after we hang up the phone here. This is Carmen Spina, the head coach of the Rutherford Bulldogs, uh, a, a long-going, simmering feud with your principal and your assistant baseball coach, Joe Sotera. We talked about Joe Sotera's side of the argument last week. And then when I went and covered Rutherford this past week against Whippany Park, I got his response on tape. I bid farewell with this little piece of audio from Carmen Spina. All right, now on a serious note, this is your opportunity to respond to Joe Cetera. I will play this response on the show. What would you like to say to him about well, you well, accusing well, him of stealing signs? Well, here I'm going to tell you something right now. <laughs> you know, I, I extended an olive branch to Cetera. I told Jimmy Fucci to say, 
Can you please tell? I saw him in a softball. And Jimmy's like his yeah, I, I said, I said, can you please tell tell Joe to that I said hello? And he, I got a text back, and his exact text was "Go f yourself, Spina." <laughs> so, so you know what? So that, so that message right there. I'm the biggest fan of your show. I sit probably listening to it in school when I shouldn't be listening to it. And now I'm banning it for a couple weeks until you remove him as a guest. <laughs> See you next week on Talking Baseball. Follow the leader.